Hi, welcome back for day two. If you missed day one of Tower Week, I will make sure that that is linked in the description underneath the video. So tell me the truth. How did it go yesterday? Were you happy with the towers you built? Or did you maybe get frustrated, irritated, agitated, aggravated, and all around irked? That's totally normal if you did. Now, one of the things I wanna talk about as we go through our building every day and every week that we might spend together, I want to think about what problems we're going to run into, and you probably did run into some yesterday. And I want to also think about what can be good about the problems that we run into. So yesterday, when you found yourself frustrated, if you did, I want you to take a step back and then think to yourself, is there anything good about this? And your first answer might be no, because it's really not fun to be frustrated, right? But I think there are lots of good things about being frustrated. And the first one is, it shows that you care about what you're doing. And it also shows that you're pushing yourself to learn new things and to learn new skills and to grow your brain. So those are two really good things that you can think about when you get frustrated. And it's also a really good opportunity for you to practice dealing with being frustrated and then still being able to move forward and do something productive and positive. In fact, I know exactly how you feel because when I tried to build this tower, I got it all built up about where it is right now. And before I could take my picture, the air conditioner kicked on and it knocked it all down. And I was so annoyed and I sort of stomped off and took a big long break and then came back because I wanted to be able to make this picture for you. So I understand what it's like to get frustrated and it's totally normal. And I'm not trying to tell you don't be frustrated. What I want you to try to do is think of it when you come into these problems when you get frustrated, think of it as a chance to practice because you're always gonna have situations in life where you're gonna get frustrated and you're gonna get annoyed and you wanna quit. And if you can figure out how to manage your emotions about it, you can actually get yourself out of that problem and into doing something positive and productive. So one of the things that I try to do and sometimes I'm better at it than others is to just stop and notice that I'm frustrated. I might even just say out loud, I'm really frustrated right now. First thing is to notice it. And the second thing is to make a decision. Decide that you're going to handle it in a positive way. Decide you're going to choose to stay calm instead. Sometimes that means you might need to say, you know what, I'm frustrated. I'm going to take a five minute break. I'm gonna go get a drink of water. I'm gonna go splash some water on my face. I'm gonna do 10 push ups and calm down and then return to what you're doing. Sometimes you might need a longer break than that and that's fine, but look at this, all these things that we're gonna be doing together throughout the week. When you hit a roadblock and an obstacle in your brain or an obstacle in your building materials or any kind of obstacle, take a step back and say, okay, this is part of what I'm learning. I'm not just learning how to make a tall tower or how to make these materials work together. I'm also learning how to make positive choices when my brain and my emotions maybe don't really feel like it. And you might've noticed the poster behind me. These are some of the character traits and behaviors and ways of thinking that scientists and engineers and mathematicians try to use in their work in their daily lives. And I call them STEM ideals because an ideal means in a perfect world, if things were absolutely perfect, these traits are the things that you would always be using and always be demonstrating. In a real world, we know sometimes we get frustrated and sometimes we don't make the perfect choices. So we're gonna be referring back to some of these STEM ideals as we move throughout the week. And yesterday, one of the ones that we focused on was being resourceful because maybe you didn't have the most perfect building supplies to make your towers, but you may do with what you could find around the house. And that is awesome. And that is being resourceful. And today we're gonna to focus on analyzing and asking why. So we're gonna take a look at some photographs of some of the designs that I've already had and some of the designs that you guys have been making and sending me pictures of. It's not too late to send me your photographs. I will make sure to share with you how to do that in the description underneath the video. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of pictures right now and I want you to just look at them closely and notice what you notice. Ask yourself questions like, what do I notice about the materials that are being used in these designs? What do I notice about the connection points? Did the person use a lot of tape or certain kinds of cuts or folds? What do you notice about the shapes that you see? What do you notice about the base or the bottom of the tower versus the top of the tower? 
what do you notice about how many levels the different towers have? Take a look at the pictures and notice what you notice. This part of our process is going to take more than just a few seconds. So those pictures I just showed you, I'm going to make sure that you have a link where you can go and look at them and take your time to really look for patterns, compare and contrast, look for information in these pictures. So I'm going to give that to you. And that's one of the things I want you to focus on. This brings me to a point that maybe your teachers may have gone over with you in the past. If you've done a bunch of STEM challenges, you've probably heard of something called the engineering design process. And if you are familiar with the engineering design process, you might be wondering why we did things sort of backwards yesterday. I just asked you to build a tall tower and I gave you some criterion constraints and told you how to maybe find some materials, but I didn't ask you to create a plan or to do background research. I just had you start building and creating. And that does seem kind of backwards, but we're gonna be doing things a little bit in a different order this week because I want us to see why the engineering design process came to be. Why is it important in the first place? Why is it important that we plan? I wonder if you planned yesterday before you started building, did you make a plan or did you just go right into building? There's not a right or wrong answer here. I didn't ask you what to do yesterday. I just told you to do it the way you wanted to do it. And so that's this thing we're gonna be talking about throughout the week. How do you plan? Why should you plan? And we're gonna be taking a look at that. But today what I wanna think about is what we did learn yesterday because it's kind of a way of researching what we did yesterday. We did some exploration. We explored with the materials that we had on hand and between yesterday and what I'm asking you to do today, we're going to pick up some pieces of information that are gonna help us as we move forward tomorrow with the next step of our building phase. So I have two things I want you to do for me today, and they are both in Google Forms. Let me show you the first one. So your first assignment is to analyze some of the designs we were just looking at. And don't let the word analyze scare you. It really just means we're gonna look for some patterns, think about what we're seeing, and make observations about what works well in the designs. So you'll see a tower picture, and some of them show the same tower just a little bit closer up so you can get a better look. And you'll see five questions for the first one. What shapes do you see? How many levels are there in this tower? There's no measurement included for the tower. Estimate the height of the tower and explain how you made your guess. What else do you notice about this tower design? And is there anything from this tower design you might want to try in your next design? You're gonna repeat those same questions for the next picture. When you get down here, you're gonna take a look at one of the towers you built yesterday. And you are going to answer some very similar questions here. And then the last two questions go with this picture. So you're gonna choose any of the options, A, B, C, or D. Choose any tower shown and describe anything you notice about it that makes you think it's a good design idea. Make sure you include which tower you're describing in your answer. So let us know if you're talking about tower A, B, C, or D, and then tell us what you think is a strong design idea. If you wanna talk a little bit about more than one of those designs, you're welcome to do that too. Last question, looking at all the designs so far, including your own, do you notice any patterns for what you think works well to make tall towers? What do you think is important to think about as we're going into our next design tomorrow? And then don't forget to give me your first name so that I can give you a shout out if I get to share any of your answers on our YouTube videos. And the second thing I want you to do is find the link for the second Google form. And I want you to answer these questions for me and hit submit. And this one's a little bit shorter than the first one. So these are our questions of the day. A lighthouse is a tower. I want you to examine the picture closely. What do you notice about this tower? What problem does a lighthouse solve? Another way of thinking about that is what are lighthouses for? If you don't know, ask someone in your family or do some research. And what questions do you have at, about the design of this lighthouse? So take a good close look and think what questions, what things do you wonder about when you're looking at that picture? And then you're gonna do the same thing for a different kind of tower right here. And then at the end, you're gonna compare and contrast the towers. When you compare, you're gonna tell me at least two things that these towers have in common. And you're gonna tell me by contrasting two things at least that are different about them. You're gonna give me your first name and you will hit submit at the end of that. Now, if you don't have time to do both of these assignments today, that's okay. Just do the one you can, save the other one for tomorrow or later in the week. That is 100% okay.
Now remember, if you didn't finish day one, you can always go back. You can still build more towers today if you want to, or you can hold off because tomorrow I'm going to change the criteria and constraints a little bit and we're gonna get to building with some of the new ideas that we pick up from today. So that's everything for day two. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below the video. Until tomorrow, bye for now.